Welcome to Wild West Garage. My name's Morgan, and that is a 1992, I think, S10. I know it's an S10, I'm not sure of the year. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, a while back, I, uh, I'm not gonna say I converted this truck to a V8. It already had a, uh, it had a 400 small block in it, which is laying right down there. If you're interested in uh, what happened to that engine, you can go back on my list of videos and uh, find that one. But uh, so I replaced that 400 small block with a 305. And I know it's a 305, but it's what we had. It's a good running engine. I did have to do some work on it to make it a good running engine. But uh, anyways, there it is. More than enough, more than enough power to motivate this S10 down the road. But uh, anyways, recently the the owner um, had an issue with the alternator, and it's uh, I don't know where it went, but anyways, it's so he he installed the alternator himself, the new one, which is right there. It's hard to do this when you're looking in the camera, and. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful sunny day and I'm getting a lot of glare here. So how, how, how's that? That's better. So anyways, he installed the alternator himself. And uh, the alternator that was in it was converted to a one wire alternator. So basically just a wire from the, uh, like the main output terminal to the battery. But the alternator that he got is not, does not have that conversion on it. So it need some wiring to make it work. So that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm going to show you what I'm doing. So here's the new alternator, all shiny, new. And so this truck, being that it's a 92, um, originally would have had a computer in it because it would have been fuel injected. And so I tried to find some info on the uh, on the internet about the pinouts on this connector here because there's a bunch of wires cut off there I can show you that I don't know if you can see but there's a whole bunch of wires that have been cut off and I've bared I've uh, you know cut the insulation back on some of them because I was trying to test to see which one of those goes to the uh, the voltmeter on the dash but uh, I couldn't figure it out I just kind of gave up so, um, and those wires are so short anyways, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to connect to them anyway. But I did find one wire that turns on with the key. So I'm gonna use that to uh, excite the um, field or whatever, I'm not sure how it works, to signal the alternator that it needs to be charging. How about that? So, uh, <clears throat> so here's the old alternator. So this one, so I could have just used spade connectors here. Let's get this out. But I didn't like the idea of that. And I wanted to see if I could find the actual plug that plugs in here. But I called both uh, automotive stores in Duncan. Neither, neither has it. They could order it in for tomorrow. But I want to get it done today, so I went and got this fuse holder, and I thought, well, while I was at the store getting some other stuff, I thought, hey, I could try that. And so I cut it down, like I trimmed a bunch of, I trimmed it here, both sides, and then I, I sliced off the, the back of it so you can see the profile of this side where my finger is here, and I just shaved it off flat. So that fits in there nice. It does the makes the connections. It doesn't clip in like the uh, original one did, but I think I'm pretty I'm pretty confident it will stay in there. And so the uh, number two terminal, I'm just going to hook that straight to the to the to this lug here that goes to the battery. And this terminal here. I'm going to hook to um, 
the uh, key, keyed on source on the firewall. But um, <clears throat> I don't think I want to put a full 12 volts to this. At least that's kind of the way I've always... Um, this should go to a, like, a, a light. Right? There should be a light in between here and the, the keyed source. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook a, a light bulb in here. I could put a resistor in here, but a 194 um, bulb works well. It's got, it's got um, I think it's 5 ohms you need. So I think a 194 bulb has enough ohms, enough resistance to make this work properly. And I'm not sure, I can't remember why you need a resistor in there or what will happen if you don't, but um, I'm going to put one in anyways. I don't want to experiment. I'm just going to go with what I know, what I've done in the past. So anyways, let's, uh, this is really the, this is, this, this little thing here, this little hack is really what I wanted to show you. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, it's not, it's not. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're impatient like me and you don't want to wait for this connector to come in tomorrow, that's how you can do it. That's the number of fuse holder you need if you're going to do it. Now I usually try to uh, solder all my connections. I just use a straight butt connector, an uninsulated butt connector, and I hit it with the soldering gun. And then I'll put shrink wrap over top of that. All right, so there's my light, as you can see. And I've got the wires running along here. Got one running back through this loom to the bulkhead connector and got the other wire running out here to the alternator. So if I start the engine, that light should turn off. It's showing, well, not quite 14 volts, but I don't know how accurate that gauge is. But it was only showing uh, around 12 before, so. That's off. Uh, it is working properly. I'm going to check the output of that alternator to make sure it's good. So that gauge in, on the dash isn't accurate, I guess, but uh, it's an indicator. So that's that. So um, I guess you need you need three things. You need to connect that alternator to the to the battery on the big lug, um, and you need to connect the number two terminal. To the lug and then the number one terminal needs to go back to an, a, a, a keyable source like a, like a key on source and for some reason it needs some resistance in that in that in that circuit so usually you know that wire would run back to uh, like a, a, a light on the dash so when you turn the key on you know just pretty normal stuff you get you get that light on the dash and then as soon as you start your car it goes out just like just like my light does here under the dash or under the hood I mean uh, so I guess if you're working on the truck and you had the engine running and that light came on you'd know you're you know you're not charging right but uh, as far as sitting in the seat it's got that gauge it's not accurate but um, it's going to be an indicator, so he'll know, you know, it's just below 14 volts, so according to that gauge, is normal. Anything else is going to be a, a problem. So, um, anyways, that's, that's, that wraps this, this one up. It was pretty basic. I mean, uh, 
I hope you didn't expect me to show you all the wiring for this job, but um, you know, I mean, I guess if you uh, if you're gonna do a V8 swap, and with if you're going from a fuel injected um, engine to a carbureted engine, um, so basically all you need is uh, well, this doesn't have an HEI, but it's got a MSD. But if you're running an HEI, you need one wire. You need a power, a keyed power wire, and that would probably be the same. Uh, you'd use the same wire that goes to the coil for the fuel -E engine, <clears throat> and then uh, you need this alternator wiring, and this. On this truck, it's using the in-tank pump to uh, supply fuel. And the only thing I'd like to do on this truck is put an oil pressure switch in. Because when you, when you turn the key on, the pump's running all the time. And that's not really safe. Say if you got into an accident and, you know, for whatever reason, the fuel line got cut and there's fuel pouring up and be fuel pouring all over the place as long as the key was on so um, so what you need is a an oil pressure switch that turns on at like two or three psi and that you know you, you can easily get that kind of pressure while cranking or you could have a bypass so the um, the, the the power that's going to the starter to um, like to to power up the solenoid, you could you could loop off of that, or use a relay powered by that circuit as well to send power to the uh, <coughs> to the fuel pump. And then as soon as you let go of the key, that that's that's gone. But you're still the key's still turned on, and then by then you're going to have oil pressure. So the oil pressure switch will feed then be feeding the fuel pump but uh, you know if personally if I was going to do one of these swaps I mean I, I am involved in this but I didn't I didn't do this swap originally it was already done I would use a I would use a mechanical fuel pump personally just because they're simple they either work or they don't um, having all this wiring and in tank pump and because it's an in tank pump I think it's the the original fuel injection pump, so it's putting out um, 30 psi. I think they put out, so he's got to have a fuel pressure regulator. So there's all kinds of fuel running around in a circle here all the time, because you only need three or four psi for the uh, carburetor, right? And maybe maybe five psi. So anyway, enough rambling. Thanks for watching. See you next time.